Everything's green. <laughs> Everything's green on Monday at Collider Movie Talk. <laughs> Name one right off the top of my head. Fantastic Four. Everything in that trailer oh is not in the gosh, movie. Oh my gosh, there's so the much thing in that trailer. Dropping from a helicopter, people firing at him. <clears throat> yeah. None of that's in the movie. Reed Richards talking to Doctor Doom. What's coming? Change is coming. That's not in the movie. Doom. It's Doom. Yeah. All that stuff's not in the movie. So. There's Change like a lot coming. of yeah, a lot, whatever's Doom like, running for yeah. president. What's not in the movie? This trailer's not in the movie. <laughs> Sorry, you were asleep, Ellis. We kept, we kept trying to wake you up. Just wouldn't answer the phone, dude. Or is it cooler? You're like, check this out. I'm telling you right now, it's cooler. It's like, check this out. If you're with me, movies are free. I'm telling all you the right time. now, it is not cooler. Bam. Oh, it's well, cool. Hang on, Don't you got you, you got a lot of shopping to do later. Let's just talk about what's reality here. You pull out a card, you're like, slap a card, and be like. You're with me. This it's always free. People be like, "Huh, yippee, Anakin and <laughs> stuff like that." Things. Hi. What do you think, Shep? Are we going to see from Fox a Fantastic Four two? Absolutely not. I think all of us were waiting for them to pull the release date. It's just when were they going to do it? So even though they tried being slick and sly about it, that's why it's on every uh, every <laughs> news site. They're like, they pulled it. It's like every you couldn't have uh, couldn't not see it if you're online last night. It was like everywhere. So I think everyone was waiting for them to admit defeat in a certain sense. Like, no, it's not. It didn't work. This isn't going to have a, a fan. There's not going to be a Fantastic Four two set in this universe. If they do anything, they'll bring in Brian Singer. But I don't think they're even going to do that. I don't think they're going to do an X-Men versus the Fantastic Four. I think what they're going to do is they're going to go back to Marvel and say, you can have Fantastic Four and Galactus and Silver Surfer and Doctor Doom as long as you give us the ability to make toys out of the X-Men. Because Marvel Disney has been really, really smart about their strategy. They're like, yeah, yeah, we know you have X-Men and you have Fantastic Four. You can't have video games. You can't have toys. We're going to minimize those characters in the comic books, if not cancel them altogether. You're not going to see them in our posters. You're not going to see them anywhere. We're going to destroy them in the eyes of Marvel fans. So it's not going to work with X-Men. X-Men is still going to keep going. It's a great film series. It, you know, we got X Men Apocalypse. We got several other television shows coming out with X Men, Fantastic Four, and all of the characters that are wrapped into Fantastic Four. I think kind of should go back to Marvel because a lot of those characters like Galactus and Silver Surfer would work great within the the setup, and even the Skrulls would work great within the setup that Guardians of the Galaxy already has with the Kree. That's like, it feels like look, there's somewhere that those guys can make a deal, and like what what Fox really wants is that video game money. They really want that action figure money. And that's what Marvel's like, no, no, no you're not getting that, son. Sorry, but we might be able to make a deal because they're never going to get X-Men back. That's just not, no, happening. That's not happening. That's never going to happen. Fantastic Four, totally different story. So I think there's there's wiggle room in there. There's a deal there to be made. I mean, it's like, and also don't forget, Fantastic Four is Marvel's very first character. Yeah. It's the yeah. flagship that's the thing that started and the Marvel. very first super team. Very first super team. It's not Spider Man. It's not Hulk. It's not. It's Fantastic Four. So that's that's something just to honor the legacy of what Marvel is that Disney. So there's an bought. emotional element there too. There's a lot yeah. there. So that's the history of Marvel in general. It started with Fantastic Four. It'd be great to get that back. X Men. That's Fox's. They're gonna. They ain't they're, never leaving. It's <laughs> never gonna leave. I say make a deal. Both studios are smart. They can figure stuff out. It's all about money in the end run when it comes with these kind of characters. I agree. Fox is, they've rolled the dice like three times. They're not counting Roger Corman's because that was a different company, but that's true. It didn't work. So I don't, I don't see them putting more money into it. I see them like, let, let's get money out of X Men. Let's make these series work. Let's have the same kind of thing that Sony has with Spider Man and Marvel. I think there's a way to work it. What's the next phase? What is it? Uh, it's going to be phase. phase Four is the yeah. next one. Yeah. Phase yeah. four. Oh, oh, oh I all see. Right. We weren't going <laughs> to do it, but then we realized <laughs> yeah. the number four is there. Uh, hey. It's feet. It's it feels feet, like it's feet. Yeah, they're not going to. Fantastic Four in phase five doesn't feel right. <laughs> Fantastic Four, phase four. Hmm. But wait, all phase, phase four <laughs> is going to be just six Fantastic Four that universe means. movies. That's what? it. The world's going crazy. Yeah. I think yeah. she wins. Yes. Grandma wins. Yes. Yes. Chris. Christmas story, it is. No, and do you remember oh, that? Oh, that's right. And all the Swedes were bragging. Nah, that's snap, right. When it was the snap, Swedes. I got to see it before you. <laughs> I'm a Swede, and I got to see it before that you. One? That's a really horrible a accent. I, no, I'm not doing a Swede. I'm just doing a. I got to see it before you, bragging jerk. That those you 
Swedes oh that love me, gosh. I'm not talking about you. <laughs> I'm talking about the angry, hateful Swedes who get to see Star Wars first. You better shut up. I think, no I think Avengers that is, came that out. is yeah. what, what jerks sound like. That's you know. exactly yeah, what... get the theater for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, they, All they of our that. equipment <laughs> is from <laughs> Ikea, so you can't <laughs> hate that much. I know. Basically everything yeah. we are on in the, here the comes The score long <laughs> desk and the Opsonk, uh, you know, basket case and the Fimblar uh, bookshelf. Thank you, Swedes. Uh, I mean, they're making a Pez movie. You know, <laughs> making an emoji movie, making yeah, an Angry right. Birds movie. Why not? Tetris. Yeah. What's happening to this planet? The adventures of <laughs> Father Bear and Mother Bear and Brother and Sister Bear. They never yeah. like, took the time to name themselves, probably because right. the bears are just trying to survive. But but you make it adventures. really dark. Yeah. Like yeah. Brother Bear is hooked on heroin. Yeah. <laughs> He's hooked on bear heroin. Yeah. Oh. Barrowin. <laughs> Man, I can't get enough shots of this barrowin, dude. <laughs> so many childhoods just oh. collapsing. Oh, I'm he's selling dates with his sister to pay for his addiction? <laughs> now I really oh want to I want to see this Dark. movie so bad. <laughs> totally live action. Yeah, like, Father Bear's home. Who <laughs> wants it first, kid? That's right. <laughs> and oh, add a couple of really dark gosh. songs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, That's let's great. totally destroy our fond memories of this <laughs> wonderful thing. Just call it Barrowin. <laughs> Uh, and I want to thank the guys sitting at the table with me, sitting over here on my left, Mr. John Schnepp. Schnepp, where can people find you online? I was just uh, over in the corner, like, shooting up some barrowin. You missed it. <laughs> uh, you can find, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp. You can get my film, The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, by going to www.tdoslwh.com. We have a special Thanksgiving. You could uh, buy the film right now. We lowered it 10 bucks. Get the digital download and support an independent film. Or if you were laughing at the Julianne Moore one, you've got problems. <laughs> 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 it's so funny that she's forgetting things. <laughs> <laughs> this She's comedy so is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Sure, I, I don't think any like I played Warcraft. I don't I don't want to see some dudes chopping wood. <laughs> like get me some more gold. <laughs> so I, you know, there's certain things I don't want to see in a Warcraft movie that are the mechanics of the game. But uh, I honestly, this second trailer won me over. Like the first trailer, I was like, ah, you know. I, I, was, I guess it was getting used to the way they had made the orcs look, but they look great. I mean, I think this this trailer actually shows you more of the story, which is what I wanted to see. Like, I get it. They're, they're you know, humans and orcs and they're going to fight. But this was kind of cool just seeing just a little bit more of how they're going to start it all up. And I, I, for some reason, the way they put this trailer together, to, you know, made me say, wow, I actually want to see this Warcraft film as opposed to like, uh, it's a combination. It is a combination of Lord of the Rings and um, you know every other fantasy game that's ever been turned into a movie. Or I mean, because that's what the mythology is. So it's sort of like it does look like you know everything else, but at the same time, it, it you know I think they did a lot of extra things. At least for myself, I like the armor. I like some of the little flourishes that are in there right now. So yeah, for me, I, I was actually now I'm interested in seeing. The, uh, I've I, I love the story of the Magnificent Seven. It follows the Seven Samurai, which is, it's been remade so many times. Battle Beyond the Stars, another like Magnificent Seven. I'm sure we'll get a Star Wars version of the Magnificent Seven. I love the story. I love like going to get the the you know the outlaws teaming up and then saving or getting a solution at the end. So. So, yeah, I think all this this mixture of actors looks really promising to me. I can't wait to see a trailer for it. So yeah, I buy it. Yeah, um, definitely. It's got a it's got a cool action flavor, yeah, and all the characters I mean, yeah. look different. Like Dinoff and uh, Vincent uh, D'Onofrio is like you know he looks like some you know bad like woodsman. I'm, yeah. Why'd you <laughs> take me out of my cabin? You know, <laughs> he looks it, like he belongs in Warcraft. Yeah, I'm I'm very happy he's coming back. I think it was important to get the entire original team that made that mega hit back to make the second one because it's a, a magical team and. Hopefully they can recreate that. So, yeah, obviously Deadpool will be back and it'll be rated R. We got the entire team back. I buy everything he's saying. It's like I think, uh, you know, before Deadpool, you would never have thought of having any of these team movies be, P you know, obviously PG-13, but never R. But now I think he's right. Uh, they've set a precedent. Deadpool is going to be part of X-Force, as will Cable. I think you go from an R and an R to... A PG thirteen. What are they gonna do? A G rated X Force as a musical? You know what I mean? It's, it has to be R. It kind of just it's like you've already set a precedent. Let these guys rock this quadrant of these with these characters and what all of us fans really liked from the film, which is basically a no holds barred action film with superheroes swearing, violence, craziness, fun. I mean, that's that's kind of what Deadpool is, and that's what I want to see Deadpool too, and that's what I want to see in X Force. I don't want to see them you know, like crimp backs thing and like have a family go on the weekend. It's not a family film. It's a. It's basically 
for young adults and older adults. That's what I, how I feel. Well, what's interesting is like to make an R, all you have to do is drop two f bombs, which I think you know that's stupid. You have one f bomb, it's PG thirteen. Right. You have two, it's R. So the the rating system's already flawed and dumb. It needs to get worked on and it's fixed. F up. Just it's f <laughs> up. Um, but aside from that, it, it could be a challenge for them to have you know Deadpool come up with different like PG thirteen rips on people. Are you swabbly Windheimer. You'd be like, what's that? And, well, I couldn't say what I really wanted to say. So, you know, I don't know if they want to take that Pepsi challenge or not. I think just make it our man. I totally buy this image, even I though we're not we're not even in buy and sell. Oh. But you know what? Uh, I think uh, I, I like the image. It reminds me of this movie called The Wolverine, uh, where he fought this uh, kind of green kind of like person in a cosplay outfit named Viper. Remember that? Uh, not the Wolverine that we all know. Yeah. It's Hugh Jackman in the yeah, Claws. Yeah. Oh, that movie. Yeah, it was just called The Wolverine. And he fought a dude, a green person. Yeah, green lady at the end. It was, yeah. bef- it was The Wolverine, right? the second one. Right. Yeah, so that it looks a lot like that outfit, but a better version of it. Um, you know, it's going to be hard for me to even want to see this film, so I'm not the right demographic to even talk about outfits for Power Rangers, but... If you know, I, I'd be more interested in the fans and what they have to say. Any of any of you who've watched Power Rangers in the past and you're Power Rangers fans, does this fit into even a new Power Rangers look? Is this something that excites you? Like, oh my god, this looks amazing, or is it like some like it doesn't have the spandex? You know, I don't really, I don't get Power Rangers at all. So for me, it's like she looks cool. She's got like some weird little nobulins on her face and. He's all green. Snap the Oracle. Buy or sell Civil War, <laughs> making two hundred million at the box office. Oh, 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 oh. oh yes. Um, you know what? I was saying this a couple days ago. It's going to make way over two hundred million dollars. Way over. Yeah. It's 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 an incredible film. It's going to the buzz once people see this film. Like we've been buzzing about it. Well, some yeah. of us have. Oh right. I mean, sorry, Ellis hasn't <laughs> yeah. seen it yet. Some but of us have. We we've seen it. Yeah. And we could we can't stop talking about it behind Ellis's back because we're keeping the spoilers away. We don't want to ruin it for you. He sees it tomorrow. You're seeing it tomorrow. There yeah, you go. Yeah, I was going to so, make the announcement. Oh, you no, cannot stop ruining this show. <laughs> I know, I apologize. You just cannot kidding. stop wait, being the wait, monkey really, in my wrench. Wait, really, you're all routine. We haven't said that yet, so yeah. you know what? It's gonna. I think it's going to make way over $200 million. I mean, $200 million is just like, the, it's, a, it's. oh, it only made $200 million is what I'm saying. Like, I wouldn't be surprised for you to hear it's made $230 million. More than Star Wars. Yeah, wow. it's because basically the buzz on this film is is over the chart. It's, out of, it's off the planet. It's insane. So, and it, when people see it, Immediately, what they're going to say to every single person they know is, you've got to see this movie. So that's all that's going to happen is on Thursday and Friday is that's all people are going to hear. So they're going to they're going to run to the theaters on Saturday and even Sunday is going to be insane. So, I mean, that's my that's what I feel. I feel like that's what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, I, um, I, I got just from that poster alone. I wish we had got that on tape. Um, <laughs> but the, the, that was laugh out loud. Yeah, that was, that was laugh out loud. So, was just a red background at, with Steve Crow. Like, yeah. Schmoes, Schmoes, Schmoes. Take it down back a little bit, Schmoes. Come on. I don't know that you need to. (laughs) You but know, I don't know if you need yeah. to say, oh, you haven't seen the movie. I don't let you know. It's, a, it's an actual movie that happens. These guys with cameras had, and they, these go, guys go, haven't go. had their coffee wow. yet. Okay. So, so silly. silly. I guess, Ashley, what's our next <laughs> no, Oh, well, you want to talk about Shannon Elizabeth? Not really anymore, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, since we were going animated, you could you could pick a lot of like animals like Bambi, uh, Dumbo, Blue mm. from the original animated Jungle yeah. Book. Um, live action animals, I, I can't... Uh, it's hard to think. I mean, because I saw Garfield. That was garbage. <laughs> it's like you know, there's yeah. a lot of, lot of, a lot of ones that they tried. Yeah, I mean, oh, you Paddington. You like Paddington? Paddington. Yeah. Paddington thank yeah. you. Yeah. I I'll, loved Paddington. I'll yeah. steal. You know, it's fun. I'm glad you made those voices because honestly, when when we read comments that that say that, that's how we hear people. Yeah. They, you know, you guys can pay it off. You sound like you sound so dumb that you have to make voices. You can't read it like a regular person. The, your your question though. It's, I'm glad you brought it up. There is zero agenda. I, like Christian said, I was so incredibly excited to see this film, and so disappointed by the outcome that it actually took me almost a full week to recover <laughs> from my disappointment. Like, I mean, we did a review the like literally an hour after, and my numbers kept dropping every every day. The next day, it dropped a full point, and then the next week, I was down another point. It was just because 
I saw it again and I was like, it didn't work out for me. The story didn't work. Uh, the characters didn't work. I felt there was like a, a, to me, almost a betrayal of the characters in a certain sense as to at least what I expected or what was my opinion of these characters. So, I mean, every everybody has their own opinion. I mean, all the people who love Batman v Superman is like, I give it a 10 out of 10. It's a masterpiece. Just because I didn't doesn't mean I'm wrong. And I'm not saying you're wrong. It's our opinion. But there was no agenda at all. I wanted to love that movie. I wanted to, I wanted that movie to be the number one film of all superheroes for me. And it didn't it didn't happen. So, you know, the great thing about it is, hey, people learn from their mistakes. Recently, we heard there was like a four hour cut of Batman v Superman. That alone should tell you why at least some people didn't like it or say it didn't make sense or felt that it was like, oh, these storyline segments just drop off or don't have any. There's no reason that people want to do this. There's no I mean, that's what I'm saying is like they had four hours and they had to cut out an hour and a half of story. I mean, that's that'll tell you something. You know, I don't think anybody went in to see Batman v Superman with a hate on. And I think DC has a, like 10 more movies to make it up for us. I think Suicide Squad, I'm looking forward to that. There's nothing, there's, I mean, I wish I was on somebody's payroll. That would be awesome. Mr. John Schnepp, where I, can people find you when you're not napping? Uh, when I'm not asleep and uh, late for work, you guys can find me uh, on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp. Uh, check out my Kickstarter, it's the last two days. Rally, help me make this film. Uh, Sweaties Unite, Rise of Uber Nerd. You could still donate. Let's see if we make this film or not. You know what is going to happen, though? This Friday, I'm going to attack uh, Woodstock, Chimpstock, whatever his <laughs> name is. I'll just lay, let's just uh, sit on Chimpstock for right now. It's going to be a battle. Let's see if his luck wins out this time. That used to be my to my title, Dream Crusher. Yes. But since then, <laughs> I've just become beloved by everyone with all my opinions on Batman v Superman. What's up, everybody? I love you. Schnepp, do you come from France? Are you excited about the Coneheads? Are you excited about Doctor Strange? Give us your take. I am over the moon with this uh, with this trailer. Oh, I loved good. it. I absolutely love this trailer. Um, I'm in the exact opposite camp of Dennis. I thought Tilda Swinton looked fantastic as the Ancient One. I'm glad they gave her that kind of bald head, kind of... Um, uh, like kung fu type of you know that, that it felt like they were adding a little bit of uh, some of the matrix and some of the old kung fu uh, film, uh, like that TV series with David Carradine it had that kind of flavor to it where she's kind of the she really is like the master and that's what was so great when she like literally punches him into the astral plane that was pretty sweet and, uh, yeah. and then we kind of go on this little quick uh, quick trip really fast through some of these uh, different kind of uh, visuals then he comes back and he's like, teach me. I just, I really liked, also, I mean, if you haven't read the comics, they're basically kind of giving you a flashback, flash forward origin of, you know, why he's searching for this ancient one is to fix his hands so that he can become the one of the greatest surgeons again. He is a very selfish person in the beginning of the film, but I don't know how they're going to actually, if what we're seeing, like how they cross cut it, I think that's kind of how they will do it. They're like, they're not going to spend a lot of time on the previous version of his life, like him being a selfish surgeon, we'll see that. I My guess is in flashbacks as he's searching and, you know, you see him sort of going back to his past and then it'll flash to, you know, flash forward back and forth. But anyway, I thought the the trailer was great. It gave you little hints and, and you saw all the main characters, Chiwetel AG4, Benedict Cumberbatch, um, Tilda Swinton, and of course, Mads Mikkelsen, and even uh, what's Amy, 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 Amy Rachel, Rachel McAdams. Well, it was actually officially clarified that he is directing it. Um, Hollywood Reporter and a lot of other uh, news sites verified it with Warner Brothers. He's writing it, he's directing it, and he's acting as Bruce Wayne and Batman. And I love it. I, I think the takeaway from my, myself and a lot of other people who, who either liked it or didn't like the Batman v Superman film was that Ben Affleck was a great choice to play Bruce Wayne and Batman. I think that the visual interpretation of Batman in this new, um, you know, DC universe. I loved it. I love that kind of that this version of Batman. So I'm really happy to see that it's going to continue on. I trust Ben Affleck as a writer. I trust him as a director and I trust him now as playing Bruce Wayne and Batman, having seen him do it. So I'm really excited about this. I hope it's October 2018 because that would just be a perfect Halloween to see the Batman in theaters. So yeah, I, I'm really excited that they finally announced it. They just haven't announced the date yet, but I'm glad that he's a part of it. And I'm glad he's doing the film. You know, I got to add, it's like, it's really fun because we all, we've talked about this. Ben Affleck is a gigantic Batman fan. He had actually built a bat cave in one of his former houses. Like, like this guy, like is a real Batman fan. So to have him writing it, 
is incredible because he's already an Oscar winning writer to have him like the kinds of things that he's going to be able to pull out. Like I can imagine he'll do an entire like five or 10 minute opening sequence, maybe with a whole other villain before we even get to the main story. Like, I don't know what he's going to do, but I'm, it's really, it's like the Russo's doing Captain America where you have someone who's a fan of the character actually, and who understands the character actually writing it and crazy enough directing it and being Batman. That's freaky and awesome at the same time. Uh, if it was Batwoman and she was like, I got a bat cave, I'd be like, where, oh, well, that where is it? Different. Yeah, let's That's check it out. Okay. <laughs> well, if it's a Batwoman, yeah. I am running for the hills the other on, direction. Man. Little gothy, a little awesome right there. Yeah, no thanks. I get my fill. Spider-Man was so fantastic and spectacular in Captain uh, America Civil what War. Whoa, uh, Webba, what? Um, <laughs> You know what? I, I, they could have a corny title like Spider-Man Homecoming. I'm still excited about the movie. I'm not a big fan of the of the title. You know what? Vulture, what, maybe he could be in high school and it's his teacher. He's like, I'm creating weird vulture wings. Probably not as corny as that. So <laughs> let's just know that it's not going to be that. Are you auditioning I, to play the vulture right now? <laughs> hey, hello there, Peter Parker. Help me put these wings on. That's how the vulture sounds in my mind. Hello. Um, if you read the character description <laughs> for the vulture, he's not too far off from something a schnapp could play. I mean, look, he's this brilliant scientist. He got screwed over. I, I, think, I think the money guy screwed him over, but he had built this flight harness and the flight harness not only enabled him to be able to fly all around this was created in like the early 60s by yep. stan lee by the way it, it also gave him superhuman strength so totally mirrors my life story i did yeah. but build a flight harness and, totally and does the vulture over. hang out the old folks home and that's where schnepp <laughs> is going to be hanging yeah, out yeah, i'll well. be hanging out at the old folks home in about two or three years geriatrics me and we'll be playing yahtzee ashley will come and visit me she said she yeah, promised she'd come and visit me anyway homecoming <laughs> i'm not sold on the title but i love that they are doing this Spider-Man movie with the new, brand new Spider-Man that's introduced in Civil War. When you guys see it, you will love this new Spider-Man. And any any worries that you have about Homecoming or whatever the title's called Prom. will be, yeah, it'll be washed away. <laughs> it's like Batman, if it, the new Batman's called Batman of Special Thanksgiving. You'd be like, what the hell? What is that? You know, you still go weird. watch it, you'd but you'd be like, it. "What the hell's that?" What's title? What's with the title? I'm sure they're tying this title in in multiple ways. Not just that he's back at Marvel, but maybe it does have like, you know, you know, it's, he's got to ask a girl out for a date to the dance, or there's like, this could be a whole bunch of different things that are are worked into that title. Well, that's yeah. why the embargo is lifted. So if you want to check out all the people like me and Dennis who saw the film in our opinions, but non-spoiler related, you could see it at two o'clock. Yeah. I think Ellis, are you going to watch it? Our, our non-spoiler. Uh, and now it's time for buy or sell, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Go check that out on Collider's channel. It'll be up later today. But. I buy it. I absolutely love it. It's such a weird a melding of both of them. You're right. Men in Black 3 sucked. It arrived dead on arrival. They should have called it M-I-B-D-O-A is what it should have been <laughs> subtitled. What a horrible film. Oh, I hated but, that movie yeah, so much. I didn't even see the end. I walked out. It oh, it gets walk worse. Yeah. It gets worse. Walk away film. Um, so, yeah, and, and 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street, fantastic. Now we're at 23 Jump Street MIB. So just to flip it around and call it MIB 23, it I love it. I love it's it's it is kind of like you're right. They're not straight up saying it's a sequel, Jump Street and Men in Black, but I like that they're just saying, look, it's the combination of both these worlds, and you're gonna kind of guess that Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill are both asked to be Men in Black, and there's gonna be a brand new person who's training them. And that's kind of it's you're right, it's gonna have that naked gun flavor. I hope it's got all of those elements to it. I loved I, both of those Jump Street movies are incredibly fun and really funny. So to see that merged with a dead uh, you franchise. Know, franchise, it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, they're pumping that back to life, you know, with some much needed comedy. So MIB twenty three, just the title alone makes me love it. Impossible <laughs> that it'll be the worst movie of whatever year it comes out. It's, it's impossible. It's impossible. Is there I'm calling it right Norm now? The North no, movie there's just no out? way that it could be the worst. <laughs> There's always something worse. Schnapp buys all Tessa Thompson joining Thor Ragnarok. Chris Hemsworth. Chris Thor. Hemsworth's Thor, <laughs> Thor character. Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth's worth to me is in gold bullions, <laughs> soup style. Um, Tessa Thompson, I totally buy her as an actress. She's great. She's one of the reasons I liked Creed because it's like I actually believed her and Adonis's uh, budding love, and it was really fun to see their interaction in the film. And uh, she's an up and coming great actress. So why not be in a superhero film? Her agents are smart. They're like, get in one of these things. And they she, they got her in something that I think has a lot of promise. Thor and Hulk doing the Bing Crosby, uh, you know, Bob Hope, you know, singing out, you know. I think they're gonna be singing on some weird alien camel. And she might be on a third <laughs> one, like a weird turtle creature. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it sounds great. Uh, you know, Jarella. 
actually thank you guys yesterday I asked on Hero I was like or it was actually on Movie Talk I was like what was the, the Hulk's girlfriend's name from the 80s and a lot of you uh, responded and told because I couldn't remember Jarella was her name and I think she's playing Jarella I'm, yeah I'm, I'm saying she's not going to be Chris oh, okay. Hemsworth's girlfriend I'm saying she's going to be Hulk's, Hulk's girlfriend Bruce Banner's girlfriend okay. this might just get I'm guessing that they're going to be on some different alien planet and she's going to play this character Jarella that's just a hunch and Thor is going to be with Sif or they're going to introduce some something that happened with Jane Foster where he's going to be bumming out or something, but he's not going to just be like hooking up with Tessa Thompson. God. They might get dumb people and they just end up calling that number and they're like, this sounds like Russell Crowe. You just so, call Mark Ellis dumb. Hey, <laughs> we know <laughs> that Mark Ellis is a, to he's a, he's a <laughs> lot smarter he than he looks, ladies and gentlemen. He's on the but TV. I buy this trailer. That's all I can say. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't, do, don't, don't okay. say anything. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You got to see it. You got to see it. It's awesome. really, really good. Are they doing another Paddington? They are doing another Paddington. I was in the same boat with you. It's like, I, I hated that trailer. It was like, it, it, not as disturbed as you were. I like the way how, <laughs> yeah. did, how oh, yeah. I oh, like actually how creeped out. I enjoy your creeped out in this, though. Dennis had nightmares about Paddington. The bear with the toothbrush. And yeah, it's like, oh, just brushing its teeth. It's made me ill. I like that though. It never made me ill. I just didn't like the trailer. Like, it just felt forced, like him going down the stairs. I was like, oh, it's another one of those big, loud, stupid family films yeah. that I'll hate. And I was so wrong. It was a very lovable, really well done <laughs> snort. It's an elephant with a giant metal like, blade. Like when Harloff it's, call a, yeah. a lightsaber, a, that, that light sword thing. Yeah, that, that light, light, light sword, sword thingy. Yeah. It's an elephant with a lightsaber yeah. trunk. Yeah. Snored. It's not our. It's a full on blown out like fight yeah. argument. Yeah. Uh, hey, let me save your future marriage. I'm yeah. gonna agree. Wedding's with off, Darren. I'm agreeing with both you and your fiance because you're both right. I think after seeing the Jungle Book, I'd love to see an all animated CGI with little cute wolves talking like, "Mommy, what's happening?" Is like super freaky, so like unbelievably cute. You're angry at your pets when you come home. Like, how come you can't talk like these animals in the movie? You're but angry at your with, pets. Within the same <laughs> sentence, though, I have to agree with your wife. You can't you can't have a human that's CG. We haven't broken that uncanny valley is what it's called yet. When you see a CGI person in a movie, you could tell they're fake. Even though they're very realistic, we still haven't been able to master the human CGI actor yet. So that's not there. So I agree with both of you. If you have a human interacting, shoot them for real, like they did in Jungle Book. But if you have all animals, like Dennis pointed out, Pixar has been doing all fake stuff and no one's had any problems with it. We're at that point now where we can actually make animals look real it's freaky so then they could talk and you're like i'm watching these animals have a fond conversation and i'm not looking at their mouths move in a weird way i'm not thrown out of the movie i'm just watching it now and accepting it so you're both right well yeah <laughs> you know i'll be like wait I'm, I'm just floating above them i've seen the movie wait, now they not let you in because you're press or because you're the guy that might spill a gallon of iced tea and not yeah. Yeah. i think it's <laughs> i think run out <laughs> i think it's both it could be both now but make that a little harsher reality for you imagine the shark just grips onto your leg you're yeah. still alive and it's just constantly drowning mm -hmm. you for about six or seven hours but in your insane here i've got my insane one jumping out of a plane with explosives explosives <laughs> attached to me so that i kill myself right before i explode on the ground i would just have it timed so i jump out of a plane as high as possible and i have explosives and i just trigger it right so i just explode right before See, I which nap you want to chime it's in it's weird like i, I feel kind of like oh, i remember like at WonderCon i missed preacher and someone was just like "Ooh, it was so good Ooh, and that no. was me too, though. Just to, I know. Just to defend Ellis. That I know. was me and, but, and now, me and but now the tables have been turned, haven't they? I was very close. In here? <laughs> he might be. <laughs> Dennis, what's up? <laughs> also here, John Schnapp. I was over here just saying I don't want any beans in my macaroni and cheese. And they said, Lowry's is the place where you go to make sure that doesn't happen with the pumpernickel. What's up? I love anytime we bring up golf, football, and basketball right off the top of the show, Schnapp has to turn it to beans. I know, but uh, you know what was fun on... Uh, I read something on Reddit, like some like you know spoilery like guest guest script, where it was basically uh, uh, Luke says to Ray, "No, you are my father." Like she's <laughs> like a an immaculate rebirth of Anakin or some weirdo, <laughs> some fan sweat lodge. From like I'm writing my own version. It was like it was so much fun. Check it out. It's probably like some remnant of it is left up on Reddit. Check it out. It's, it's totally insane. Gonna be made insane. into a film soon. Uh, some fan film. Somebody <laughs> somebody should make it. It was really fun. It was more fun than speculating on this because honestly, it's like. If, if she's not Luke's kid, then who is she? And how does she have all these amazing force powers? Unless she is 
Anakin Skywalker reborn. Who knows? <laughs> I've never even seen those horrible Smurf movies. Anyway, I'm going to buy this simply because after seeing Jungle Book, I think a live action version with these Pokemon creatures, but made even more realistic. Like who wouldn't freak out with a Pikachu that's like, like a cat? Badass. That's actually realistic and like can hop around and snuggle with you. It's like, but also talks and has electrical powers. Well, now you say he's like a kitty. Yeah, I mean that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna give them all real animal, you know, you know, anthrop anthropomorphize them so that they're like other animals. And so, there's so many characters. Oh, I mean, you gotta you catch them all. Snap, buy or sell the new image from Pete's dragon. I sell it. It looks like a weird hairy dog. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they know dinosaurs had feathers? Come on, people. It's evolution. <laughs> Revolution. I don't know. I think the cooler movie is actually Schnepp as like an adult version of that kid in The Wizard. Remember that movie in 1989 yeah. and Schnepp is like the guy, he's like the bully at the arcade, goes up, puts his quarter next and he just kicks the crap out of every other kid Why on the Why do I have to be the that. bully? I don't want to be the bully. Because you're like 40 years old you're in an arcade <laughs> All and there's right. a bunch of kids. I guess that's real. I guess I'll be the bully. Hey, get out of here. I put a bunch of quarters in and push oh, the kid no. over. It's my turn to play Sinistar. I'm alive! I'm sorry. I'll do it. You signed me up. I'm sorry, man. I just got to typecast you. <laughs> you guys are both wrong and screwed up. It's Captain America I'm on Team Cap. Ugh, I don't know. I don't. Anything I say, like I'm scared. I'm, I'm scared of what just I just say. What he's more corrupt. That's what you want to say. <laughs> just a little, just a little dirtier. I'm just really bad, Iron Man. All right. You're giving things away, though. I'm not giving Four anything to away. one, and all of us will now be doing the show from Canada. Moving forward. <laughs> Ashley, With Justin Bieber. <laughs> it's definitely, it's going to get nominated. I think it has a very like right now. Not having seen any of these other giant films that are coming out in the summer or during Christmas of this year. I think Jungle Book has got a lock on the Oscar. Not only is it going to nom be nominated, but it's going to win. So it's basically all these other movies have to come out and beat it. Because basically what you're watching when you see Jungle Book is 99% fabrication. They shot everything on a green screen. Almost nothing in the film that you're seeing visually is real, yet all of it looks real. All of the animals look real. The only thing that they actually shot was Mowgli on a green screen, like hopping around on like green rocks and things like that. So when you see the behind the scenes, it's really astonishing that you're being tricked by these special effects. So to me, and it's the best special effects of any kind of animals talking that I've ever seen. It's I literally didn't ever think about it after being astonished for the first five minutes watching wolves talk. Then everything else was like, yeah, of course everything else talks. Everything talks, the, cre the snails, the little, everything has its own personality. It's incredible. So yeah, I think not only is it gonna be Oscar nominated, but I'm predicting it's gonna win the Oscar. John uh, Schnepp. You, you guys are hating on him about that bottle thing? <laughs> when he said it, I thought it was gross. <laughs> but that was Mark Ellis's pee face, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Oh, well, thank you so much. It was We premiered it at San Diego Comic-Con. Thank you, Jack Hole, for torrenting it. And um, <laughs> you can get it at www.tdosl, sorry, tdoslwh.com. You can get it right now. You can get a Blu-ray, a DVD, or a digital download. You could buy it right now. It's available. You can watch it. You just click it and watch it right now. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp and at tdoslwh. Thanks, guys. I have to say, <laughs> Ashley's hair is striking today. Amazing. Farrah-esque. Fair, like, it's got a little feathering action. You guys, it's darker. <laughs> I come in and no one <laughs> noticed. What if it was a giant Ted? Walking, <laughs> um, That'd be great. Figure it out. We were like, "What did she do?" And that's why I, I, knew, I know we didn't mention the hair, but I was like, "Cause we were so stunned and freaked oh, out." Oh, like, okay. Like deer in the headlights. <laughs> okay. Like she did something amazingly different. I don't know what it is. I can't mention it. I'd feel weird if I said something, <laughs> and then she brought it up, and we we're like, "Of course, it's the hair. That's what it was." Obviously. Hey, you know, I'm from the East Coast. I used to eat uh, Drake's cakes. <laughs> very delicious. If you've never tried them here in the West Coast. <laughs> Mr. John Schnepp. Schnepp, where can people find you online? You guys can find me at uh, Twizzler.com. I'm working on my brand new Twizzler movie. That might change it to Red Vines. It might be a bidding war. We don't know. Uh, you can find me uh, on Twitter and Instagram at John Schnepp and at TDOSLWH. You can also find my documentary, The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, at www.tdoslwh.com. Please buy a digital download or a Blu-ray. That helps me get out of debt. Thanks. It was awesome. <laughs> Do it again. Do it again. No charisma points. <laughs> <laughs> also here, John Schnepp. Hey, I went to Seal Beach for the first time. I didn't know what it was. It was really fun.
You guys should check it out sometime, <laughs> especially if you're surfers like me. <laughs> this episode of Movie Time brought to you by Seal Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley Mova is Mark Ellis's new dad in Flavor Time. All right, guys. <laughs> Captain Kirk. Dun, 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 ah. One of these. Uh. Oh, yeah. One of the <laughs> double axe handles. Uh. The Macho Man double axe. Who axle. ever does that? Yeah, that's an automatic. And, and no hurt. kidding. They yeah. did the karate yeah, chops through the shoulders. It's like, well, he thought. So, Martin, stop eating all those chickens and get with it. That and was the, the second Hulk. Don't forget about the Hulk dogs. <laughs> yeah, the Hulk the dogs. Hulk that, dogs. That's kind of wildly different and creepy, right? <laughs> then, yeah. He's in between that 48th slice of pizza and he's like, I'm tired. <laughs> Yawn. These superhero dramas, I must kill another character. And savagely. Spectre Nick yeah. Nolte. Yeah, he's fighting Spectre Nick Nolte <laughs> in the water. I would keep it at five and I actually don't like that they expanded the best picture to ten. I, mm. I feel I feel it does diminish it a little bit. You don't have to add everybody. It's like it's, it's going to be it's like you can equate it like I for the first time on the show equate it to sports uh, like <laughs> yeah, the Olympics ah, in the Olympics no one really remembers the person who won the bronze decides he wants to be a DJ yeah he's, <laughs> he's like he's got a DJ manual he's got the thing is all set up he's like still learning he's got the little scrubby scrub while he's watching a TV show having some cereal and he just gets stabbed in the throat by Jason and that's the that movie. sounds like the end of the movie. No, that's, that's the beginning. Yeah, that's okay. the beginning. It's, for, you know, it's just a Robert Englund cameo, like Scream. Oh, and then, bam, Jason's wow. back. And then you cast a brand new Freddy. Maybe yeah. he's inside Jason. It's a subtle flex. Like, <laughs> check this out. <laughs> so, Tony Ja, what's up? <laughs> I'm waiting for it. <laughs> All right, what's next? Tony Ja. Yeah. yeah. I really do. So you're saying there's two Will Smiths. There's before Earth and after Earth. <laughs> oh. oh. See you later. Peace out. Cha -cha -ching. Snap, so, your point on this. I was going to say, I think Roland Emmerich and Will Smith both swiped left and right. And then they were <laughs> yeah. play, playing games with each other. They never got to the table. They never got to the date. They never like did Mark the first Ellis date. No, date. <laughs> never got to the first date. It was just a lot of weird emails and missed phone calls. Like, I thought you called me. Like, weird stuff. <laughs> Um, so we're left with a kind of a triple X two. You don't like look like your picture at all. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Vin Diesel got killed. Remember, Vin Diesel was like written in off X, in yep. triple X two, and Ice Cube was like, yeah, whatever. And then he got whatevered, and now Vin Diesel's back. It's like whatever, son. So Will Smith. I've been could. whatevered a lot on Tinder. I think Will Smith might be back in ID Forever Part Eight, <laughs> and then it'll just wipe away like, oh, that that guy who got killed was actually my clone from the other aliens from some other weird thing. And now the aliens' grandchildren are That's coming right. back for revenge. All of the Chada Pinkett. Smith and everyone's gonna be in the movie. I don't know. The big what if though is Batman v Superman. It it has to be good. It's not. It better be good. It, it has to be because well, it better be good too. Right. It better be good. But <laughs> it, it literally, they. You know, I that trailer, that second trailer, really doused a lot of people, including myself. Like, why did you have to show all that? It mm -hmm. was unnecessary. Fire the guy who cut that trailer. The people who were in, tr in charge of cutting that trailer. Really bad decision making. But. Even with that, I'm still incredibly excited to see it. And I think even with seeing that trailer that I think the marketing campaign was like, look, let's put this out there stupidly and not really the best way that they could have. But now that that's out there, what are we going to see with that next trailer? What are they going to do? And what is the actual film really about? I think it's going to be really exciting. And I still have my hopes set that it, this is the film to, to set off the DC universe. He it uses makes... gay force powers. What's wrong with that? <laughs> it makes... Gay force powers, obviously. It... It's like if you uh, remember the Star Wars holiday Christmas special, they Why celebrated... are you bringing that up? They celebrated... I keep telling you never to bring that There's up. There's a planet called Kaishik people okay and it's a planet full of wookies and they all love each other they celebrate life day and it's everybody life celebrating day. life day that's right so you know there's nothing wrong with it i don't think i mean it's like it's a moot issue plans within plans <laughs> Ellis, this is your weird <laughs> hatred of fantasia bubbling up again you, you, you like a i know right yeah pure garbage <laughs> I don't know. The creepster, Mark Ellis. All right, you're just naturally invulnerable, and you can fly. How about that? Okay, wait. I'll, I'll naturally go. invulnerable. Yeah, just naturally it's not invulnerable. A it's not a superpower. It's not super. Because comes with the flying. The That's the smart, the very smart answer. I side with ice as well because of Campia. <laughs> What? I wanted ice to make my beer cold. Like I would be to like, save if humanity. I had, yeah, everything would be on fire. I'd be like, how do I put this out? With Everything's me. on fire. I know. <laughs> Shoot, stop shooting more fire on his Schnapp. Fight. It doesn't cancel the it out. The is on fire. Everything. Yeah. I'm picking ice simply because I think Schnapp is going to take fire. No. No. Just follow you around I'm everywhere. A, we're both ice, ice baby, yo. Shh. <laughs> Gliding around, drinking cores. Some people in the chat were yelling, "Damn it! X-ray vision for obvious reasons." It's like, that would that would be a bad one. Yeah, but then they still see you staring at them. That's right. When you're invisible. <laughs> like, yeah, you have X-ray vision, but you just see this creepy guy. Like, I'm not <laughs> looking at nothing. 
<laughs> when you're invisible, it's like this. It's like it's like this. See now I'm still looking. Alice, he's still there. Wait. <laughs> With that, because you would probably do something. You would probably you would have X-ray vision. You probably have right. a hard time because you'd be like you'd be talking to a girl and you go, "Hey, who's Robert?" And she's got like a Robert tattoo right here. And they're like, "How do you see that? No reason." <laughs> Mr. John Fire Schnepp. Oh. Schnepp, where can people find you online? Trader. <laughs> you can find me uh, uh, just at, on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp. You can get my film, The Death of Superman Lives. What happened at tdoslwh.com. That's right, El Nino and Sinead. <laughs> El Nino and Falcor. <laughs> El Nino. Three years matters. So, I mean, I don't think they, they want to wait three years to then start principal photography. Hashtag so that it comes three out. years matter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, really, it really does. So I hope, uh, and also check out the brand new Godzilla. Toho Studios just released their version of Godzilla. That's right, yeah. It looks like a crazy piranha. So, I mean, you know, it's like. <laughs> Not it's like a, fat American. No. Remember yeah, that big like, complaint? I know. The, the giant thighs. We don't like the new Godzilla. It's like, look, at least he wasn't an iguana. Remember that one? <laughs> Emmerich? Anyway. Jeanette, buy sell Stallone's decision to walk away from Rambo. Man, I have to I have to, you know, abide by what Stallone says. I don't want to see anyone else play Rambo, but I am bummed that he is not doing a Rambo 5 cuz I so thoroughly enjoyed Rambo 4. They should have just called it Rambo Rambo exploding heads <laughs> by arrows, exploding so arrowheads. Good. There were liquid bodies is what I, another thing I could have subtitled it. Bodies become liquid. It's like, look, there's something going bad. We're going to help. Let's get the whole crew together. We got these mercenaries. And then just insanity, super violence. And violence done the right way, the way you should do violence cinematically, over the top, crazy madness. So Rambo to me was so much fun. Uh, I was hoping that he would do one more, one more Rambo with Stallone. I don't know. I'm so kind of bummed out. Stallone, come on, man. You, you got it in you. You could do it. You know? That idea, too. I love it coming full so circle. So sell it, Snap. Well, yeah. I'm I'm I sell it. <laughs> Gr Grizzle face. Yeah. Wasn't that his name? And it posts right behind you. It's very similar to where it's just an intense face in a, in an environment. And like he's like, cold. But I know he's cold. Yeah. You know he's cold and he's angry. <laughs> he's, cold. he's cold. He's yeah. angry. He's got a, an injury on his nose. So but look, <laughs> if you thought Lawnmower Man, the first one sucked, check out Lawnmower Man, too, because that sucks even more. That's incredible suckage. That's I incredible like suckage. Man. Yeah, I, like I, the one thing I remember is a bunch of kids on a weird roller coaster in in cyberspace. I mean, that's the one. I mean, just try to wrap your head around that. It's beyond dumb. Wow. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Like comedic, like, hey, hey, like overacting ruined the film for me and made me dislike it. Secret and everything. No, Special science. meeting. We <laughs> need to call no, the meeting. Exactly. No, Signs is a movie that Christian I. Christian Harloff, you've been called before the tribunal. <laughs> I know. Is Juan directing this? Yeah. He oh, uh, then I'm 100%. I think it'll make more money. If they can't do this. No. No, it's so <laughs> that, good. I mean, but that movie. I loved that film, and I'm a giant horror fan, and that movie scared the out of me. I'm telling yeah. you, it was like chills. Yeah, yeah, I got chills. It was like, especially the end with the chair, and I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. You know, the, it was so much fun to get scared, like really scared in a movie theater again, because I've seen so many bad horror films where you're like, ah, you know, you're just like, oh, when is this going to end? It's garbage. Predictable, Predictable yeah. and just, you know, and then you see this film, and it's, so much fun, great cast, amazing story, spinning around. If they could recapture that with The Conjuring 2, then everyone who went and saw, I went and saw the movie three times wow. in the theater. I was like, I love that film. If they capture that again, it's gonna box off, break the box off, at least beat its original one. Yeah, like I mentioned yesterday, the trees, and then I was <laughs> hoping maybe Shyamalan will handle the wind. Um, yeah, the, he already has. That's right, I know the call to happening. Uh, so. Yeah, based on yeah, why not have some more natural, uh, you know, the Arctic or whatever snow? Just call a movie snow, you know? Why not? Do you really want to hurt me? <laughs> Conjure Club. Go. Do you really want? To? Hey, it's raining, guys. Because I, I see that one monkey that looks like the the like spider howler monkey that's doing that. You know that one dance? Looks like he's hitting a high C, like I in the poster. See, yeah, I want to see him sing that song. Man, I am so excited about this news. <laughs> Can't wait to not see it. I don't think I'll see the Transformers 5. I mean, Transformers 4 almost melted my brain in its garbageness. It was so horrible. Um, I mean, you know, we've already talked about that a lot, so I don't want to get back into Transformers 4. 
I was I actually kind of liked parts of three, and I didn't like parts one and two. So. That's because it was in Chicago. Yeah, you know, hey, I like seeing <laughs> Chicago get blown up. Go sue me. Um, I live in Chicago for a while, guys. Anyway, it's not about me. It's about Michael Bay and his unwillingness to let go of the Transformers because they just keep throwing piles of money at him. And why not? Because he's made an incredibly successful franchise. Yes, Transformers he has. four made over a billion dollars. You think that they're not going to get him? I mean, this is a business. It doesn't matter if the movie is garbage, if it's a horrible, unendurable dreck for anyone with a brain to sit through. It savages your 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 brain. It makes you hurt when you see the film. It doesn't matter. It made over a billion dollars, sold a lot of toys. I guess anybody who's a Transformers fan from the toys of the 80s or the cartoon, you're just going to have to rewatch those cartoons if you really dig that because you're not going to see a different kind of Transformers movie that's not made by Michael Bay for easily another, I'd say, 10 years. I guarantee you he's going to direct Transformers 6. I swear it's my last one. I have to finish this Quadrille 6 trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. i got to make a super box I set of something. I have to finish something. the sex Yeah, the i got to make an Optimus Prime head that fits all of them in a Digicube, and then he'll do the seventh one. Yeah, it, it took me a while for Zootopia to finally sink in, and this trailer sank in. Like, why do the animals have to wear human clothes? That always bothers me. That the, it's tailored to be, you know, like the rhino wearing a, a cop outfit that only a human would. That it took a while for me to get over that. <laughs> like, why are they all wearing the same? How do they drive cars? Why is this happening? You know, like, why would they live in a building? It should be animal shaped or something. <laughs> it didn't make sense to me. My brain just wouldn't work. And then finally, this trailer kind of locked it in for me. Mm -hmm. Like, see, the bunny's a cop, and the cop's a cop, and like you know do a little so it was funny and i i'm looking forward to it but yeah it is the year of the animal he also for storks is another one there's oh, like yeah. an unbelievable mm. amount of like talking animals like you know with fraser um, yeah i can't remember what's fraser's the actor's name uh, uh kelsey grammar, kelsey grammar yeah. doing the voice also of known as the beast yes right? who was a good beast was by good the way beast. sorry hope, i'm about I, to go off on another time he comes <laughs> back in as the beast in zootopia i don't in know zootopia. <laughs> no but yeah I, I thought the trailer was really fun captain so. beasties on the police force <laughs> schnepp do you think that daredevil season two releasing on the same day as batman versus superman would negatively affect the opening weekend of the new dc film <laughs> yeah <laughs> Most definitely, it'll destroy the box office. <laughs> it's going to just, I can't believe Batman v Superman, the biggest bomb of that. No, it's not going to affect it at all, <laughs> as in zero. I just think it's kind of like a fun, if it does happen to be that way and Netflix does do that, I think it's like more of like a gesture, like, oh, yeah, you got, you know, you remember Daredevil, you know, Ben Affleck, remember Daredevil? Well, check this out. <laughs> Bam, son, you're Batman. Now, here's some Daredevil to slap that on top, you know? I think it's that's all it is. Because everyone is still planning on going to see Batman v Superman Friday or Saturday or Sunday. Everyone's planning on seeing it. I don't think that a binge watching of like t 12 or 13 hours of Daredevil is going to affect that, especially for everyone who already has Netflix. If you have Netflix right now, you'll be able to see Daredevil whenever you want. Like me, it took me like an extra like four months to actually watch the last five episodes. I remember it was like, yep. oh, I'll get to it. Oh God, when will I find the time? And then finally I was like, why did it take me that long? Huh, I could have just breezed through it. So you can easily breeze through it whenever you want. It's not going to affect the box office of Batman v Superman. I think more more so it's just kind of like a fun little, oh, yeah, ch check this out, like a little gauntlet getting thrown down. But it's not going to affect the box office. Hey, what's up, everybody? All right. <laughs> I, was, <clears throat> I had a lot of drinks last night. Uh, the complex guys are in town, so it's <laughs> always dangerous. <clears throat> How's it going? Yeah, I loved it too. Uh, especially uh, me and Dennis did a reaction for it this morning, and Fuqua and and Hawk and Denzel all together again since training day. That's cool. Add D'Onofrio to the mix. Add all these other guys. It just looks like a fun film. Pratt definitely the comedic. You know, he's going to be the jokester, but it's it feels like it's a natural fit. Like he's got to be a little crazy. So. I'm all in, man. I think that the, this teaser trailer is fun. And and that's, the, yeah, like the, the villain whose name escapes me, but you get you know Scar's when you God. see him. No, we were yeah. talking about him. He's yeah. like instantly slimy. Yeah. He's, he's like instantly evil. Slimy. Yeah. Yeah. And, and even though he's not like a physically intimidating presence, it's just like you just feel like he's pulling the strings yeah. behind the it's, scenes. It's his body of work that yeah. has gotten to your subconscious because the thing that always gets to me is he was so despicable in, in Boys Don't Cry. Mm, um, yes, and it always it's it's always there. It's how good of an actor he is too. But that that role is. Oh wait, there. here's my impersonation of him in Green Lantern. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so bad. There it is. Yeah, not his not his fault yeah. though. Not his I know. fault. Uh, I really like the trailer. I thought. I mean, I haven't. I'm not. I'm not even planning on seeing the Huntsman, so I'll be skipping that. But I love Emily Blunt, and I think she's a great actress. And this trailer 
though it might give a little bit uh, too much away i think the way they cut it it's like you don't really know how it's gonna go but obviously she dyes her hair at some point so she's suspect in some weird way it definitely had that gone girl flavor to it right uh but intrigued me enough to i really want to see it what is this number you keep why do you keep saying 420 (laughs) Ah, (laughs) what are you talking about emily blunt blunt yeah blunt Flomp. Schnapp, what do you think of Willem Dafoe in Justice League? Wait a minute. How can Henry Cavill be in it? He, oh. Uh, <laughs> Willem Dafoe? I love Willem Dafoe. I, I think he's fantastic. I don't believe for a second, though, that they cast him as a good guy. The only thing I think, he the, if he's a good guy, he's playing Harvey Dent before he becomes Two-Face. He is born to play a villain in these kind of superhero films. So I seriously hope it's just some subterfuge like, yeah, he's a good guy called Dark Side, whatever. It's like, that's what I'm hoping. He's a good, he's an amazing actor. So he could play a good guy or a bad guy. I'm happy they cast him. I don't care who he's playing really, but I secretly hope that he's playing a supervillain. I got a question. Yep. What if he's playing, what if they cast him to play John Johns, the Martian Manhunter? You think that that's a possibility? I mean, they haven't announced. How you know, old is that character? Well, he's kind of, he's he can play any age really because okay. he's a shapeshifter, but he is, I've always seen him like he's an older, like in his 50s Martian or whatever, you know, however Martians age, he's slightly older. Well, when you're hunting men and they're on a different planet, it ages you. <laughs> I know. It's a, it's a stressful got, job. He does have a slightly weird name. Martian yeah. Manhunter? Yeah. What's up, dude? It's like, he's why like, do I have to be the Martian man? Why I can't I just be a Manhunter? What, yeah. Why do you have to like, like, like profile me from yeah. what planet I'm from? Well, can't I just be a hunter? <laughs> yeah. I'm just yeah. a dude yeah. from Mars. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like uh, specifically like, uh, you know, it's problematic, not in a cute way, because he's basically saying, you know, hey, a lot of the things that happen in that film, you know, I'm guilty of just as much as anybody else in like, you know, I, I got a chance to visit uh, the Avengers set, uh, Age of Ultron in London and watched him and he was kind of he was halfway through the, the shoot, which was a, a harsh, harsh schedule, nonstop shoot. He was limping. He had hurt himself. He was right, tired. Yeah. And it was like, yo, you've got another like 60 days to go. It was like, it was a pretty brutal shoot. And I watched it for like three days and I was like, wow, the guy, you got to give him a lot of credit. I mean, he, I, Avengers number one is still my favorite team superhero film yet. It's still my favorite. And uh, Age of Ultron, yeah, it's not as good as Avengers. And it's a lot of other films. Like, I, I, I'll i say I liked Civil War better than Age of Ultron. I think it's a better film. That's not saying anything negative about Joss Whedon or his creativity or his imagination or his abilities as a writer or director. It's just I think there was a, you know, there was some of this back and forth between him and some of the people at Marvel where it became kind of like a tug of war, I think. And that happened while they were shooting all the way through to the final edit. And I think that's a little apparent in the film. But Age of Ultron has amazing sequences in it. And it's also it really is a great continuation of, you know, seeing all these characters like the Avengers move forward. So I wouldn't you know, I wish he wasn't as hard on himself with Age of Ultron. It's not a failure. You know, I want my MTV. That's why I, I, I totally buy this. Um <laughs> Yeah, there is no more reason to have an MTV now. We have you you are in control of any music video you want to watch on YouTube or any other of these streaming services. You control it. You pick oh, I want to watch this and there's like a group of other like you go down the the wormhole, the YouTube wormhole and you're like, I've just watched 50. Now I'm into I'm into like the gr- grunge metal, you know, it's like I started out with like the talking heads. So who knows? I mean, I think uh, I want my MTV is a really good idea. We're going to get to see all those VJs, video jockeys. Remember that terminology? Yep. All this kind of weird terminology. And yes, back when they showed 24 hours a day music videos, MTV is not what it was and never can be what it was. So it's cool to document that kind of historic moment when it really became an iconic presence where you actually had to watch MTV because you wanted to stay in tune with all these cool videos that were you know popping off. Kids, before MTV was MTV, it was MTV. <laughs> I buy Vin Diesel as Silver Surfer after looking at that poster. <laughs> with Chrome Dome floating around. Um, yeah, no, I buy the poster. It's mysterious. It's it, it's it say, says a lot by showing nothing. Is kind of it just shows like, new roads ahead. It's kind of a somber looking Vin Diesel. We're probably reflecting on some of the things that happened in the previous movie. So yeah, I buy the poster. I, I think it's a it's a cool entry point to this new Fast and Furious film. And it's, it's the emptiness of the space. It's him exactly on, right. It's the side view, his face. It's yes. not. It's not. I'm not a tough dude. It's not a happy. It's like this 
reflective look. And that's so, why I think that I buy it because right the, because the words and the fact that where what we've known has happened in the process of this film. Why are you laughing, Mark? <laughs> I sell this. It's, it's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's you stupid. got this it's, giant yeah. grin on your face. It's just a dude looking <laughs> sideways at a road. Like, are you lost? Use your phone. Get some directions. What is he Mark, doing Mark, in the middle of the road by Mark, himself? Christian and I are just kind of like taking <laughs> it in and like creating angry. a story you guys, from looking you at you the guys poster. Wove this amazing <laughs> tapestry that's so much better than anything in this poster. It's just he's looking sideways like he is me looking at this poster. Like, like really? That's it? He just looks confused. He looks lost. He looks like a traveler who who misread a map and now he's looking. He also looks like if somebody's presenting him with these new roads that are ahead, he's like, Really? Do I gotta go? He doesn't so look excited about are the you new selling adventure. This? No, I am I'm, I'm tired of, of every movie. Vin Diesel's so reluctant to get back into it. And it's like, oh, okay, fine, you'll pull me back in again. Guess what, guys? You can get Dom Toretta to do whatever stupid heist you want him to do. He's up for because he's got nothing nothing better to do this poster does nothing for me i don't i, I still want to see the movie but it's, it's just a dumb poster it, it means nothing i, 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 mean, totally, I, don't even... I don't know where else is coming from you man. got you guys made an amazing movie just now okay i like your guys movie but the poster it's right. ridiculous i don't even know who you are anymore <laughs> yeah makes it even worse. guys ashley was so excited about being a vj two segments ago and now, and now you brought, brought the mood down, down with animal abuse. Hey, i didn't knock the horse what, out. what's god. next is he eating horse meat no oh my god he's just like selling horse meat um you know what I'm going to steal a quote from the Collider News that where the, the guy who wrote it was like, we're not going to let Robert De Niro go out in a boxing movie with grudge match. So that's why he's back. Uh, I, just, I thought that was pretty yeah. funny. But uh, yeah, the trailer, I, I, it, it looks like a really well put together trailer. And the story of Roberto Duran is, uh, um, it's Roberto, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Just to make sure I don't say his name wrong. But, he uh, will punch you out. Yeah, I don't want to get punched in the face <laughs> by Roberto Duran at any age. And um, yeah, you know what? It's funny. I saw the trailer and then Christian came in a little bit later and he was like, is that Usher? Because that's exactly exactly what I said out loud when I watched it. Is that Usher? Is it, oh, that is Usher. Cool. Yeah. He's playing just, Sugar Ray Leonard. I'm so. so glad I didn't go yeah. along with Christian when he asked me if I heard of that story. Because like I wanted to lie. Just be like, oh, yeah, that was a great fight. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, some, like, no, he knocked the horse. T, T, T Rowe said, well, the horse did hit first. Oh, <laughs> real nice. Unbelievable. Yeah. Well, poor horse. Um, that trailer. Unbelievable. What do you have to say about Finstock and the fact that he calls you one schnimp? Well, you know, like uh, he's got a lot of fanatics out there, and I'm like, I gotta just tell you, chimp stock. He's going. And he's, he's got a he's got a lucky streak. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna argue that. I mean, me and Dennis went against him and JLX or whatever that other dude's name is. We went against them, JLX. and somehow, I mean, it was me and Dennis. You know, we're pretty smart dudes. We got beat up. We got destroyed. And you know, it's it's that luck that you know, if anything. You know, I'm gonna give Finstock that edge on on just like a goofy, almost moronic, <laughs> ape-like way of kind of pulling out an answer or being able to just get that edge just by pure luck. So that might happen, but you know, I'm sorry, Flimpy, um, <laughs> Flimpy. coming at you. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. I mean, look, it's never it's never considered professional for the announcers to comment on who they think is going to win. But Christian, this is this this seems to be a horse punch. This seems to be <laughs> where right. going to just look, walk. Let up. me just yeah. say, we might be three thousand miles from Graceland, <laughs> but I'm not going to be punching any camels. Also, here is writer director extraordinaire John Schnepp. Why, thank you for that intro, Sinead. It's so cool to have you back. <laughs> Jazz ah, for Tuesday yeah, night. Most of my life, unfortunately. But um, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I'm pretty jacked up about it. I was hoping that, that that skimping around New York would be like kind of like part of this West Side Story, Doctor Strange musical number. <laughs> but we know that that's not. Kids, relax. Is that's not really the part of movie magic? And then while jumping and run, that's not really going to be in the film. That's, they're probably jumping into some weird portal. Watch, it'll be in the movie and it's a musical. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to it. And I, I cannot wait to see. What do I expect to see in the trailer? I expect to see Doctor Strange in his astral form. I expect to see Tilda Swinton as the Ancient One. I expect to see a couple of really cool amazing psychedelic shots from another dimension. That's what I want to see. Uh, I don't know. Is this, this Why are you asking me as if you assume I know because everything about One Direction? Because I'm pretty sure Harloff and Schnapp don't listen to One Direction as much as you do. Um, he, yeah, he is the one with the long hair, and he was dating Kendall Jenner. He's oh, a front okay. runner. All right. The well, guy. All right. Let's see if you can act, kid. Good luck. I believe in him, you guys. <laughs> what the hell is I don't going know on? What we heard about this. You whispered. You think you got some ideas. What are they going to yeah, release? Definitely the Batman October 2018. That's a, the perfect Halloween movie. That's awesome. Right. Yeah. So I think that, you know, glad they listened to us. So thanks, Screen Rant, for like, you know, breaking that news. That'll be really cool news. And What's I, the other one? I think the other one's going to be Superman. Superman, not yeah. Lobot. 
No, I, probably not Lobo. I think Lobo. Lobo, 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 Lobo I'm, going, be, I'm going totally yeah. Empire Strikes Lobo, Back. Lobo. I, actually, Sorry. I'm glad you said Lobot. He deserves his own no solo movie. movie. No. A Star Wars story. Yep. Lobot. First and, Lobo. Yeah. First Lobot, yeah. then Lobo, okay. and then Lobo versus Lobot. I think it's going to be, you know, yeah, I think Mr. It, English, what do you think? Well, I think it's it really comes down to, I'm not even doing that. <laughs> I miss oh, Mr. English. I, I love Mr. English. Give me a couple of crumpets then. And so I think it comes down to, it does come down to the theater. And My question is, who's more of a nerd, Christian Harloff with Star Wars or John Schnepp with comics? I'll let you Man. answer that because we got the reason. I, I know where this mm. got stemmed from. This is this was from our, we just put up the Force Awakens commentary, which is live right now. If you've got the Force Awakens, uh-huh. you should check it out. And I am a big fan of the canon going on in Star Wars, so I was referencing the book like quite a six thousand different oh, books constantly yeah, again, yeah, constantly. But, but, but he goes, but this is for the book, and there's things that are ca- ca- canon. And he was just he goes, he looks at me, he's like, "You're a real Star Wars sweaty." Uh, so well, no. Here's the, here it is. I'll <laughs> I'll say yeah, definitely. As far as for Star Wars, Christian is like the biggest Star Wars nerd that I know. As far as reading every single book, every comic book tie-in, every video game cinematic cutscene, every you know Star Wars Rebels, every so he's like immersed himself in that Star Wars universe. Uh, but like for myself, I just watched you know The Force Awakens, so he kept mentioning like, well, the backstory of Maz Kanata's friend Skimby Scomby that was in a Blood for <laughs> Blood Farts Five Star Wars a new sto- a new hope. But it's canon. But he's like, but it's canon. I'm like, look, dude, I don't give an f. I'm like, I'm trying to enjoy the fucking film. Whoa. Stop talking about stop talking about all these weird books, man. And it's like. I get it. It is canon that it fills in some of the backstory, but people like me are not going to read those books. I just want to enjoy the film. So it's like if the film, it's like if there's a scene in the film that I'm like, ah, I wish they explained that. He's like, well, it's fully explained in uh, Star Wars page Saboteur Seven, yeah. uh, page fifty three, with but Darth Vader's son. Is, so. But the be- but to to further along this question, this guy is probably the sweatiest comic book guy you will ever hear. I walk in sometimes and I love and I come in and I like to watch heroes because it's it gets me informed. But there's in and, and there's sometimes when they'll go off on well in issue three twenty five in nineteen eighty seven and you're just like wow they really know their stuff. So I don't really think that there is a one or the other. See, we both- I can settle this. <laughs> I, I can tell because I have to deal with both of you ad nauseum. So here's <laughs> here's the way that it shakes up. Okay, is that is that lifetime stats? Schnepp wins biggest nerd because Schnepp has been collecting comic books since he was a fetus, and he's been he's been digesting yeah. those and absorbing the material ever since then. So he's got the longer track record. But recently, what Christian Harloff has done with Star Wars canon is unprecedented. He, if he could chop it up and snort it in the bathroom, he would totally do that to the. Who's to say I haven't. So it could have happened. So I'm going to say while Schnepp is like Larry Bird, the greatest career all-time shooter, I'm going to say Christian is like Steph Curry, where it's like, dude, this guy's stats are impressive, and he's coming up on your heels, Schnepp. You better keep reading comic books because this guy's well, coming. I think they're also in two different worlds, so it's not yeah. even a competition. It's really like we're just both big fans of these different things. I mean, comic books is a larger world, so I, I'm not saying I'm a, I'm, a, I'm the king of all comics. Or I have, there's a lot of information in comic books that I haven't read. I have to say like in the in the niche world of Star Wars, this guy's got almost all the bases covered. He would definitely say Bespin. You know what I'm saying? He would. Oh, he would you know, I'm just oh, yeah, yeah, had, to, good. had to fit that's that good. one. That's What's good. happening? So, uh, well, yeah, speaking there's of there's no competition. Out. If you're a fan, you no. should just enjoy this stuff. And if you like Star Wars, watch his show. If you like comic books, watch my show. It's a win-win. All right, Sinead, who's the biggest nerd? Me or uh, Schnepp? I mean, I think you guys are equally as nerdy to nice. one another. Yeah. 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 Okay, and I'm the cool one. All right, what's next? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He is the sweatiest comic book nerd I know. He is the Schnepp man, Mr. English, John Schnepp. Hey, what's up? You guys can follow me just at John Schnepp on Twitter and Instagram. And check out my Kickstarter, Sweaties Unite, Rise of the Uber Nerd. It's live. It's the last two weeks. Pitch in. Help me make this film. And Mark Ellis, Mark, where can they find you? Uh, you can find. Thanks for that glowing introduction. Uh, you can find me. <laughs> Wait, let me do hometown. it. Mark Ellis, Thank the you. coolest dude on the planet, Mister Rock and Roll, <laughs> Mister Don't You Know It. It's Mark the Mother Effin Ellis. That's right. And speaking of rock and roll, Schnapp, I'll be at the hometown of Kiss, Ted Nugent, Axel Foley, and RoboCop this weekend. I'm in Detroit at the Comedy Castle. You can get tickets at markellislive.com.
And we're so happy to finally have her back here on the Movie Talk set. Sinead DeFries, where can they find you? I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Sinead DeFries and at that so Sinead.com. And it's so great to be back. Good. Yay. And for me, you'll see me grabbing Javo Darth's helmet and smashing it into a toilet 175 times in Vegas. So make sure you check me out at Christian Harloff, Twitter and Instagram, as well as Jedi Council, Movie Talk, the whole shebang, and Schmodown this week. Sam Levine versus Hal Rudnick iconic those two guys are going to actually be on the show on thursday to talk about their match who will win hashtag schmodown let us know who you think is going to win the match thanks for joining us guys and we'll see you tomorrow Yeah, I think she's a great actress. I think this movie looks like a giant steaming dump. I mean, seriously, I'm not going to see it. If it was called The Trees, I might go see it. That's the all trees. I get. That's all I have to add. By M. Night Shamhammer. Yeah, that's right. The Trees Whisper or something. Maybe if they added The Forest is Alive. Then I might go see it because it would sound even dumber. So, <laughs> so, it's, so it's dumb, but it's not dumb enough. It's not dumb enough for me to actually care about this movie. Even though she's a really talented actress, I think that this is one of those like. It's an in-between job for her. Like, yeah, I'll do The Forest, you know? Schnapp, how do you see all this? How would you figure this out? Well, off? we all know that a movie is based on how much money it makes. That's how, <laughs> how you can tell like, the quality of the film is like by how just how much money it makes. If it makes a billion dollars, obviously it's one of the greatest films of all time <laughs> and can't begin to compare to something that only made $100 million. We all know that to be fact. But getting back to the real world um, of, of, of functioning brains, let's talk about doesn't matter how much a movie makes. It depends really on your what if you like that kind of a film if you go and see the film and you enjoyed it that's really what a movie is about it's like at the quality of level when you have critics and you put them all together you can you judge by rotten tomatoes or oh, the movie got a 67 percent fresh critic rating but the audience is all said you know 92 percent of the audiences so it might be somewhere in the middle it depends on who you are and what you like so i you know some people hate star wars but love superhero films they're very it's very rare but some people love star wars and don't like superheroes it's the opposite you know it's like it doesn't matter it's like how much m money a movie makes I heard the same thing with Ant-Man it was like you know oh it didn't make as much it must not be as good I mean it's ridiculous that this comparison every week I mean we do it because it's like it's just the business that's what we're talking about like why a, oh, a movie made this much this opening weekend it's part of the business it has no nothing to do with the ranking of how good a film is so it's not gonna happen but I, I could watch that scene of him killing all those people in a church with Freebird playing forever that was such a great one and of the one of the best scenes yeah of the year. it's, it's a, such a fun scene I don't know if I would describe it as believable it's a really well choreographed action scene that takes a whole bunch of people stunt people and all this really well done scene very well put together made me not hate the song Freebird, which i thought was impossible what i know right you no you didn't like Freebird already uh, i'm sorry what <laughs> in god's name is wrong with you boy we can't talk anymore oh my god it's some of the best nine minutes Hang on and 42 second. seconds i, I got a call here. coming in from conja club what <laughs> what is that personally i really Freebird. like Freebird. i like Freebird. Freebird is back skittered kicks ass man it, i've seen him seven times live anyway enough about this Freebird stuff would well, I take any money away? Time vortex. Sitting over here on my left, the free bird hating Mr. John Schnepp. <laughs> Schnepp, where do people find you online? Leonard Skinner, come at me, son. I love Leonard Skinner. Most of them aren't going to come at you because they're not Don't around. come at me because I love Leonard Skinner. Yeah. Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp, and you can find my film, The Death of Superman Lives, what happened at tdoslwh.com. Support independent film, yo. Leonard Skinner, free bird, son. <laughs> free bird. <laughs> Over run. here, uh, but it that says, why don't you it love? It says fifty-one fifty on the bottom of it. I don't understand, understand what's used happening. To be that. Also here, John Schnepp. What's up? It's very casual. <laughs> also here, Christian Harloff. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to these three back-to-back -back avatars because he believes in them. He's like, right. he's created this world. He's he's uh he's had this vision. He's seeing it all the way through. He's shooting three movies back to back, and what I think is they're going to probably re-release the original Avatar probably in September of 2017 you know you know brighten it up get like some you know refresh the graphics or whatever they're gonna do add 10 minutes add a little flavor of the brand new one at the end whatever it's they're gonna pretty do. long movie already it's a pretty long <laughs> movie but you know what uh, without going into anything from the new ver new movies i'm gonna go back in time like over 30 years ago when star wars came out and then they were making this movie called the empire strikes back now as a little kid i remember being in the theater and seeing the first trailer for the empire strikes back Darth Vader jumping with his lightsaber, him fighting Luke. It's like the Millennium Falcon in an asteroid field. You're like, what is this? I don't yeah, know what yeah. it's going to be, but I can't wait to see it. It was so exciting. And 
the big spoiler for The Empire Strikes Back was that Darth Vader was Luke's father. And they kept that secret. They yeah, didn't reveal right. that at all until the movie came out. No one talked about it. No one ruined it because it just wasn't released until the movie came out. And I think that with this new episode eight, whatever it's going to be called, we know that, you know, wow, I almost gave away a spoiler. Um, sorry. <laughs> it's really hard to not a, talk about it without talking about it. Right oh, God. Yeah. Um, tell the anyway, truth. Anyway, so you can't tell the truth. Um, <laughs> anyway, episode eight, I think, you know, they'll let, they'll, they will loosen it a little bit. It's like, hey, check it out. You might get on a set visit. Look at this weird planet. You know, stuff like right, that. Right. You'll get a little bit of flavor. Some people are going to talk about certain things that at once all you catch up in the next week or two, you'll know certain things and be like, it won't be as weird when you hear about that stuff. But I like the I, I like the element of secrecy and I like that. I really love the way they played it up with this episode. It's a little frustrating because everyone is like, I haven't seen it yet. You're like, feel like you're surrounded. Like, who can I talk to? Who's seen it? Oh, you've seen it. Let's go talk about it. Right. We have to whisper about it. You know, it's like this weird secrecy, even though the movie's out and it's the most popular movie ever, we still can't fully talk about it. Just right. in public. It's going to feel like therapy. You not spoil on it Jedi for me? Cou I haven't seen yeah. it yet. Jedi yeah. Council is going to feel like therapy. Yeah, Jedi Council, we're rocking the spoilers, so you better watch it tomorrow, but you have to have seen the movie. Right. We're letting you know. Christmas we're talking Eve about Eve. everything. Everything will be revealed. Amber Heard almost got her dogs killed when she flew him over to a set visit. Yeah, she, <laughs> like, she didn't have them checked in. They were like, the government stole the dogs back, and they were like, there's a big, uh, hey, look, you know, you know, luckily the dogs were not put to sleep, but you know, oh, you gotta wow. obey rules when you're going from country to country, especially with animals. Uh, I think it's called uh, Pirates of the Caribbean 5 Cutthroat Island. That's what I heard. <laughs> Check out Double Indemnity. That's a great His Girl Friday. I rock Out of the Past. I mean, there's so many Citizen amazing. Kane. Citizen Kane, Kane is a huge one. Marshall there's like soldiers. A, you know, we could give you a list next year yeah. of the 100 black and white movies that you must see before you die. By the way, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. What? <laughs> Putting together a list of 100 films. Yeah, we're black not. And white doing that hey, I'll do it. I'll do it on Twitter. Like, I don't know. It'll take like uh, like 400. Dude, posts. it takes me two weeks to get an email response from you. When, <laughs> <laughs> when are you going to put together next 100 year. lists? <laughs> next year. Sometime next year. It's like an endearing on. thing. It means like what, what it means is like when you start talking about something that you really dig, what you really love, your brow starts to get sweaty. So you start to get like you get more excited. You're like, I love that movie. This and that. You get really energized, and that's what it means. A sweaty. Yeah. That's nerd. not what the origin for me. Personally, was that's though. what my origin is. That's why I call it sweaty. If you're a sweaty nerd, you're getting all sweaty and drippy about the thing. So I just started calling people sweaty. You know, where I first started hearing it kind of in those terms was talking about Comic Con because mm -hmm. you're the phrase was always you're always walking shoulder to shoulder with all these sweaty nerds because right. it's true. I mean. Do, uh, Comic Con is a cultural phenomenon. It's fantastic, yeah. and you've never smelt the stench of human body odor like you have on the right. floor of Comic Con <laughs> late Saturday, early Sunday. It welcomes it's, you when you walk in. It it goes, Hello, you when I know. You arrive. But that's why they're so sweaty. Yeah. Yes, that's because they're like they got the backpacks. They're, they're like, ready. Hey, I must yeah. get to the next toy. Get, get. Right. Like walking all quickly, working up that sweat, son. Sweaty nerd. Hey, Mark Ellis was in The Force Awakens. I don't know if you guys yeah, saw. Yeah, he, he was like, he was like, I want my Raptors. Well, Zack Snyder did a great remake of Dawn of the Dead. Oh yeah, that was his first feature. film. Film. That's actually I, still my favorite of yeah, his. Yes, I love that version. I mean, I also love the George Romero original Dawn of the Dead, um, but this one had a different frantic taste to it. It was definitely a horror film. Uh, Terminator, if you watch James Cameron's original 1984 Terminator, it is a horror movie with science fiction. It's not sci-fi horror, it's horror sci-fi. It's a, it's a subtle difference when you, you know, which one you place first. You just, you know, or you don't care. You're like, hey, whatever you say, it's a mixture of both. But it's definitely a horror film, and it's a science fiction film. I think uh, there's a number of young directors, or younger directors, or directors who just don't have, like, you know, like Zack Snyder is working in the $100 million range right now. And honestly, with Terminator Genesis, Genesis, whatever the hell they called it, um, you know, and Terminator Salvation, the last couple of Terminator films, I don't care that they spent $100 million. The movie sucked. So it's like if they can't actually capture what was great about Terminator and Terminator Judgment Day with these other sequels, I'd say like go go a, a, a cheaper route. And when I say cheaper, I just mean restrict the budget to like five million, get a younger director, get a brand new cast. Don't get Arnold. Don't get any of the other people who had any ties to the Terminator franchise because it's a time travel science fiction horror film. The, the sky's the limit. 
And I think sometimes when you have a smaller budget, it creates those restrictions and, and makes certain things more creative. You come up with different ways to, uh, you know, make a film. That's the kind of thing that I'd like to see in the next Terminator film. I've already seen five Terminator movies. I don't need to see a sequel to, I don't care what happened to the floaty hologram in the Gen Genesis film. I don't care. I don't want to see a sequel to that version. I don't want to see a, see a sequel to Salvation. I do love the Terminator movies and I love the ideas behind them. I don't need to see Arnold. He's already done a great job in all the other movies. I just want to see something new. Fifty Shades of Boo. I don't care. <laughs> it's like, and also, I don't even think, how could this even cost $5? How can the movie, yeah. it's literally like two people having sex in a room, like, oh, don't, don't whip me again. <laughs> like a couple of buckles and shackles. How much is that at a corner store? I went to Home Depot and like bought the entire set for Fifty Shades of Boo. And it, it's just so dumb. They're going to get, they're going to recasting everybody because the first two people were like, oh, we're done. So there's going to be a brand new cast. You might as well call it Atlas shrug too because it's the same type of thing where you have oh we're doing a sequel and then even the the third movie has a brand new cast so what does it matter really i mean it might even go home video i don't think it will because it you're right it made so much money they're gonna make this with like a you know a box of chiclets and like some stubble change that they rolled a bum for and they'll still make like 300 million dollars <laughs> It's just, you know, I don't think it's a it's a it's a good question. I think they'll make it cuz it made so much money, but who cares? I'd like to see John Schnepp's 50 Shades of Grey. Oh, you'll yeah. see. <laughs> it's coming 2022. It'd be like totally different like <laughs> not have anything to do with with what the actual story. That's right. It'll just be you shopping at Home Depot uh, you know and what? that's it. No, you guys just gave me a good idea. It's like 50 Shades of Grey, but it's be like all different kinds of, yo, don't throw that shade on me, son. <laughs> like people shading each other and like totally ripping on each other. It could be a really weird like trolls come forth. Mm -hmm. The in movie Movies, like you're in charge if it makes a success or like he he created this masterpiece he forged the team he managed everything if it if it's a failure that he didn't know what he was doing he's an idiot he's a discombobulated loser everybody complained about him well also uh, that you brought up M. Night he's someone that you can you can say from the person who brought you signs yeah. or unbreakable or the sixth, sixth sense, sense. Yeah. you could say that you don't have to mention like you know lady in the water mm -hmm. or like you know happening. the other uh, happening the you know what air is happening or like we're Whoo, trees or yeah. <laughs> run away from the trees like you know what i mean like you could mention his big hits and that's implanted in people oh yeah i liked i, rem I remember seeing the you know the sixth sense that was freaky with bruce willis i'll go check that out it's like you know it doesn't work as much now because that's like that's why they pulled his name off of uh, after yeah. earth they were like yo this is not working son it's like your name is now become synonymous with jokes if gambit and deadpool are getting their solo movies why not emma frost if she is more popular than the comics than those two if i'm not mistaken she is not more popular than those two I, am i wrong no she's not more popular she's more cosplayed yeah. you'll see a lot more people dressed up as emma frost by the way i have no complaints about that it's a great <laughs> outfit um like Dark Phoenix is way more popular. Jean Grey is more popular. Mystique is a harder outfit to pull off. I mean, Emma Frost is like basically lingerie mm -hmm. and a weird cape. And then you're Emma Frost. You're like, are you like the dirty version of Frozen? <laughs> no, I'm Emma Frost. Oh, okay. It's literally, it's one of like, you know, when, when it's Halloween and gals are like, I'm going to get a little slutty. Emma Frost gets popped out. I'm serious. That is like the ultimate, like I'm in lingerie. It's hotter than a nurse. It's like, that's that outfit that's so simple and easy, but the character herself, very complex. A lot of people love the character. I love the character. I think the popularity is not really the issue. I think she's part of the Hellfire Club. So when you see this television series that's coming out on Fox in the next, like, whatever, whenever they get new showrunners, because those showrunners busted off. They're like, sorry, we're going to work on 24 without Sutherland, but we're going to still do that. So they, bought, they, they took off. They need to get showrunners. they got to get their thing back in place. But when Hell, Hellfire Club comes out next year as a new series, Emma Frost is going to be part of it because she is part of the Hellfire Club. She was also in Wolverine Origins. Remember when Wolverine, like, frees oh, all the little kids? Right. And then there was, like, an 18-year-old... You know, that's Emma Frost. She like gets all diamond style for a second and then the weird CG Professor X yeah. like, get into my ship. You know, <laughs> little like, kids, what? little yeah. kids, get into what my ship. What is that? You're like looking at this weird, you know, fake Patrick Stewart. Like, why is the CG so bad? This is past 1999. We know how to do this, right? It's like a weird robotic. 
Like, get into my ship. You're like, this look like a video game. 150. I was like, yo, that has to be just like the padded budget of all the executive producers. Channing Tatum is getting 40 million of that 150. I mean, it's it's mind boggling how expensive that is. I was like, it's in New Orleans. What are they? It's like I keep saying, it's like, go to another dimension. Mm. Are they building like another world or something? It's like that's a lot of money. It is. Well, you're not you're not missing out on <laughs> X Men Origins. That's the one where they're, they sew Deadpool's mouth closed. Oh yeah. That yeah, happens. we were talking about that earlier, where it's like one of the you know studio idiots was like, I don't like the way that guy talks. It's like that's part of his character, you mm -hmm. moron. <laughs> I don't care. I'm the boss. So his mouth shut. I'm tired of him talking. It's like literally that's what happened. Yeah, zero. zero. I was uh, just at bars doing drugs, hanging out, <laughs> <laughs> like not, not playing, playing Sonic. not yeah. playing video games at oh, all. You, yeah, you were seeing things whiz by and whatever, but in yeah. a different, in a different di environment. You were in front of a screen. To I was in in front of multiple screens, yeah. but um, <laughs> not any involving there, there's, Sonic there's, there's the Hedgehog. There, there was other mushrooms yeah. involved, but lots not of in lots of uh, you know video game style things happening. But <laughs> Gone to look, the I want to see a Mario Brothers movie before I see Sonic. No, the you Hedgehog. already saw one. No, like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that one doesn't count, man. No, no. Let's not bring that one up. Come on, man. Bob Hoskins. Come on, man. Come on. Oh, Dennis Hopper. Why you got to be going there, son? That's not a real movie. <laughs> you can find our studio by going to Los Angeles and walking about. Yeah. Los Angeles, because we're oh, there. Wait, wait. You're, you're not going to host the meet and greet at your house? Well, at yeah. At your address? Totally. Where totally, I pick you up in the morning? Yeah, that's, no? to yeah, that's totally happening. The meet and greet will be in this side alley <laughs> right next to Butch. Butch and Cassie's uh, friendly French toast restaurant. Find that. I live right behind there um, in the alley. It's a, if we watched a movie together and then we'd have to do an hour long, like mm -hmm. talk about the movie afterwards. You know, we wouldn't just be like, yeah, let's silently watch this movie together. See ya. You know, <laughs> that would kind of ruin it. You need to talk about it. Talk so. about it and then talk to talk with people. Yeah, afterwards. exactly. So like I said, we did it in Atlanta and it was great. It was a packed house. It was really fun. Um, and that was was that part of that? It wasn't part of that divergent thing, was it? No, no, yeah, no, it was no, a, no. That was a separate night. Separate. Yeah, thing. that was a. We we were definitely not going to see divergent with you guys. Yeah. You know, what movie be... would you want to see? I mentioned Galaxy yeah. Quest. I think John is going for Slither. What would you want to see with the fans? I'm going to say let's go back in time and watch Battle Beyond the Stars. I would make you all watch this crazy <laughs> Star Wars knockoff that Roger Corman was like. I need to get into the space adventures. So you you find Space Cowboy and all the other corny characters in a Galaxy, uh, you know, uh, Battle Beyond the Stars. But Galaxy Quest would be awesome, too. I mean, Alan Rickman. I mean, so many amazing, awesome stars. And it's a great series as well. It's like series. I say that because it's becoming an Amazon series oh, yeah. now. So um, Galaxy Quest would be great. He Dennis, stinks. I believe the word is Elseworlds. <laughs> yes. Is the Elseworlds series. Yeah. And, and right. You know. Sword and Sandals. Like, there were weirdo hits like Beastmaster. Remember that? Yeah. Like, it was like, I think they that was like a low budget film. But I remember seeing that in the theater. Like, Beastmaster, he controls the beasts, mm -hmm. you know. But it's like literally like, or the sword and the sorcerer where you're like, have dudes fighting a weird demon to I've got to save the princess you know there's some weird castle I mean it's literally those were those kinds of films that were shot really low budget but they were a lot of fun oh yeah. those little humming guys oh what were their names <laughs> super crystal turtle thing so. it really is almost like a superhero film when you really think about it it's like Twilight Zone meets a superhero film because they're building that dude and he's like he is the one he's like yeah. got those psionic powers and they're flying around the city at the end you're like wait a minute they're like superheroes and then then the Twilight Zone ending if you haven't seen Dark City get on that